today's date is uh, August the 13th, uh, 2010 Friday. Oh, uh, my name is Randy Evans. I'm a member of the uh, uh, of SCIU Service Employee International Union Local 73. I work over here at University of Illinois, where I'm uh, working in the Building Services Department. I am a union student also with the University of Illinois. And over here at the U of I, we've been experiencing some problems for the past year, maybe a year and a half, in terms of trying to get a fair contract negotiated for the employees of, of, of our unit, which is comprised of approximately about 3,000, 3,000, 4,000 people. Okay, at the University of Illinois uh, Hospital. All right, so pick, when I give you a three count, pick it up from when you, when you were talking about University of... Right. Talking about the problems you were having. Okay, sure. Yes, um, as, as I was mentioning before, the problems we were having at the University of Illinois basically deal with how the University of Illinois Negotiating Committee, uh, UBI's negotiating team, has not uh, bargained fairly with the employees. They have been engaged in regre regressive bargaining. They have failed to uh, give us uh, economic and non-economic proposals in terms of uh, incre wage increases and benefits, etc., that uh, we felt were relevant to the workers and stuff. Uh, they failed to get that to our, our representatives, uh, the chief negotiators of our service and maintenance of, uh, unit. Um, and we've been trying to negotiate a decent contract since our contract expired last year. As a matter of fact, the service and maintenance uh, contract uh, for the building services expired October 1st of last year, 2009. The clerical and also technical unit, administrative unit, their contract expired a little bit before ours, before that, sometime during July, August, etc. of last year, uh, 2009. And you buy not barking fairly with the employees, and they try to give us misleading information in terms of their financial condition, which we felt uh, was not, uh, we felt was not accurate. After doing research and investigating, and found out that U of I was giving out misleading information in terms of their financial uh, condition, their economic condition here at U of I. Uh, I have information that I'm gonna share with you all on uh, this day, August 13th, 2010, uh, because we're in the process, we made, uh, we voted to strike. The people in the clerical, technical, uh, service and maintenance unit, janitorial, building service, etc., transportation, all the different departments that the, that the service and maintenance uh, people unit work in, uh, they're represented by Local Center 3 SEIU, President Christine Borman and the representative of uh, Ramsey Giles, Willie English, Dave Dover, and a number of other representatives from, uh, from, service and, uh, from the uh, Local 73 SEIU have been trying to uh, work with you about in terms of trying to get a fair contract, a fair and decent contract for the workers. And U of I has claimed that they're broke. They can't give us any wage increases. As a matter of fact, uh, they said that they they cannot, they will not be able to give us a, a wage increase for like uh, two or three years or several years. And we feel that that is not fair in terms of how the president, new president, President Hogan of U of I, uh, makes six hundred twenty thousand dollars. He got a thirty-seven percent wage. He got a thirty-seven percent increase. Okay, but he said zero wage increases for us. Okay, uh, you have the secretary of Hogan who makes one hundred and ninety, one hundred ninety, approximately one hundred ninety, one hundred ninety-five thousand dollars a year. Secretary. This is the secretary of, of the new president Hogan. But the, uh, but his predecessor, uh, Hogan's predecessor, White Joseph White made approximately about four hundred fifty to four hundred seventy thousand dollars a year. His secretary, white secretary, made a hundred and nine thousand dollars a year. Okay? So I mean so Hogan, six hundred twenty thousand dollars. Um white uh, his predecessor four hundred fifty to four hundred seventy thousand dollars a year plus a twenty-five thousand dollars signing bonus. Okay. Then the secretaries, Hogan's secretary, $190,000 or 195 thousand dollars a year. Um, white secretary, a hundred and nine thousand dollars a year. Isn't that strange? I mean, uh, that they claim they don't have any money for the workers, but they have money for, uh, to build, to expand, to do. They work on different projects. They have money to give to the different administrative heads, to the chance to the heads of different departments, etc. They have money to give to the new the chancellor, Chancellor Paula Amiris, who's a, a person of African descent, a black woman. Uh, they gave her money to fix up her house. They had spent money, five, approximately about $500,000, to fix up this mansion, a little mansion, uh, that they gave to uh, Miss Mears, or Mrs. Mears, Paula and Mears, the Chancellor of U of I, okay? Plus, they sent people for U of I to do landscaping, to cut her grass, okay? At our expense. 
and you know and they claim that they don't have any money for the workers. What we're trying to do, we're trying to get a decent, decent wage increases for the workers so we feel that the workers work hard and they deserve it. I'm talking to clerical, the service and maintenance, the technical, all of us, okay, the building service workers, they deserve these uh, increases. And you buy have not been fair in terms of bargaining with us. They have uh, they have engaged again, like I said, in regressive bargaining. They don't want to uh, share information in terms of their financial condition. And what's really interesting is that the information uh, that they're trying to conceal uh, came out of a study, a report done by Professor Howard Bundes, Bunces, I'm sorry, Professor Howard Bunces, who's a professor of accounting at Eastern Michigan University. Okay, and he exposed it in his analysis of the financial condition of U of I, okay, that U of I has significant funds in terms of they have over $200 million in a reserve fund, okay, in the reserves at U of I. Uh, at the U of I Foundation, they have over $1 billion in assets, okay, and they claim that they don't have money and resources for the workers, okay, they have money in terms of, you know, to give wage increases to the workers. We feel that that is not fair, that they've been cheating employees for years and years and years, they're exploiting our labor. They basically, this is the way that they elucidate their contempt for the workers by not giving us a decent wage increase and benefits, et cetera, uh, uh, that we feel we deserve. And we're not being selfish, we're not being fair, we're not trying to do like Chancellor and Mears mentioned in, uh, in a, a uh, email, a little newsletter that she sent out stating that, you, that the uh, Local 73 is demanding uh, over 20% for U of I. That's a lie. See, she wasn't even part of, uh, of the negotiating committee. So how did she, how, how, where did she come uh, with, these, with these figures? How did she come up with these figures? Who told her that we wanted 20%? Okay, was it the chief negotiator of U of I negotiating committee? Because surely we didn't have any discussion with her about that. Okay, and I want to show you um, a whole bunch of Professor Howard Bunce's study. Here it is, analysis of the financial condition of the University of Illinois system, prepared by Howard Bunce's PhD MBA, JD, BS, CPA, Professor of Accounting, Eastern Michigan University. You can reach him at 734-487-2519. Again, 734-487-2519. This came out January 2010. How bus is participant in a forum that the service and maintenance and other groups organized at the University of Illinois Circle Campus this past March, where we had a teach-in, a forum, a, a town hall meeting at the University of North Circuit campus where we, uh, where Professor Bunces and others shared information about the financial state, the financial condition of the University of North. And he laid out how they had significant funds and resources, stuff like that, that they can give us, give us wage increases along with um, um, uh, uh, putting off furloughs for the workers and stuff who are not civil service employees. They're demanding, the University of North has demanded from the people here in Chicago not the people in Sh Champaign, like the graduate employees organization, where they, they are going to force the Jack graduate employees organization to take furlough days, and they're going to take away the tuition waivers, and then the uh, graduate employees organization, the GEO, threatened to strike, and they gave them, they said, okay, you all can, we're going to give you back the tuition waivers, you all will not have to take furlough days, and you get a uh, four or five, or uh, whatever, eight, nine percent wage increase, okay? They did it. Nurses uh, were, were told they weren't going to get very much, and then they said, well, we're going to do A, B, and C. We're going to vote and we'll have a discussion. And we possibility, we may have to strike. U of I gave them their increases, the nurses, the increases. So why is it when it comes to, to the people from, uh, from our unit, from the service maintenance unit, uh, the clerical, technical, administrative, uh, building services, et cetera, the food service work, nutrition service workers, material management people, uh, we're told you're not going to get anything. Zero wage increases for you, but 37% increase for uh, President Hogan, the new president of the University of Illinois. We think that's unfair. And what we have done, we have already voted a little over a week and a half, two weeks ago, to strike. The people voted more than 75%, 90, 90, over 97%, uh, okay, 97% came from the people who work in service and maintenance, okay, in the building services department. Voted over 90% to strike, okay? And if we don't get an answer within the next uh, few weeks, uh, okay, within uh, before before the uh, 20, uh, before the uh, I say the early 20s in August, if we don't get a response before that time, then we're gonna take action, okay? Because we're not gonna put up, we're not gonna allow people to urinate in our faces or defecate in our faces and stuff, okay? And claim and tell us that that is raining. We're not gonna let them urinate 
or pee in our faces and tell them that is that tell us that it's lemonade. Okay? We're tired of all this nonsense that you and I have been doing in terms of exploiting our labor, misleading the people, lying about what we're asking for. Because see, this is propaganda. This is psyop, psychological warfare, psychological operations, okay? Uh, on the part of you and I. They want to they want to say you don't deserve anything, but at the same time, they're giving each other bonuses, raises. They're doing stuff for the shareholders. They're over here building significantly all over. They get, U of I is expanding and growing just like the University of Chicago. But they don't have any money for employees. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's just what the University of Chicago did last year. They say they don't have money for employees to help their employees and stuff. So they laid off 400 employees. But you go over to the University of Chicago in the high pocket on the southeast side of Chicago, you see that the University of Chicago is expanding and growing. You know, they tore down. Uh, University of Chicago tore down the homes of working class folks right there on 60th, 61st, and Cottage Grove, all the way down to 63rd Street, tearing and moving people out of their homes. And this is according to the University of Chicago's master plan. See, and that was done through the Southeast Chicago Commission. That's the land acquisition arm of the University of Chicago. Over here at the University of Illinois, they have the Medical Center Commission, the MCC, which is the land acquisition arm of the University of Illinois, which is the land grab arm, which is going to come called what is land grab arm, the urban renewal arm of the University of Illinois, okay? And what they're doing, they're over here also changed the classification of civil service employees. They took many, a number of civil service positions out of the civil service system and made them non-union uh, uh, academic professional APs, okay? And we just had a hearing uh, this past Wednesday, August 11th, at the Unite Here building, located 333 South Ashland, to talk about um, the uh, AP position, how the U of I has taken civil service positions and made them into academic professor positions or non-union positions so they can weaken the union, break the union, okay? And they all, and the, and the people that was in these positions, the majority of people uh, uh, in these positions are African American and, and uh, Mexican, uh, Mexican workers, Latino, Latinas, okay? And the, and the people who, who've hired, who've been hired in the past uh, seven to ten years have been Asians and whites. Black folks lost jobs, blacks and Latinos lost jobs, whites and Asians got hired at a significant rate within the past seven to ten years. See, so there's a racial dynamic to this too. There's a racial uh, 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 point to this thing, okay? So the U of I basically is trying to give people the, this misleading information in terms of how they can't give wage increase, talking about that they broke, and et cetera. These people are like miniature kings, and they're living like miniature kings and queens and princesses, okay? They, they are doing extremely well. You buy, got money from the state. Then that 2000, uh, the 2009 state budget, they got the budget, they got 75 to 80% of their money. In the 2010 budget, they got 85% of their money. Okay? And now they're talking about, they're concerned about this 20, 25%. Now, they, the state never said that you were not going to get the money. Okay? So they're over here wringing their hands, crying, and crocodile tears and stuff, talking about we're not going to get our money. <laughs> but they, uh, they were never told you're not going to get the money. Okay? That the money is not forthcoming. They were never told that. If they have to show me the tape, show us the documents, show us the proof where you, they said that you were not going to get the money. Okay? Yo, sorry. So, this is information. Also, I want to make sure people get the information in terms of. Uh, of what we're going to do, I'm talking about uh, this, uh, you know, uh, how the strike vote authorization process works. Okay, this, this is a newsletter from the uh, SEIU, Local 73, uh, facts you should know about the strike authorization vote. You know, and it basically lays out what a strike, author, uh, strike authorization vote entails. 